Okay, so in the tech garage, we're back on budget builds, budget parts, and just pretty much being cheap. That's pretty much what we focus on. Well, kind of, sort of, but yeah, most of this budget build for anybody who's looking to get into any type of computing on a budget. So today, I was on eBay. Well, not today. Well, last week I was on eBay, but <clears throat> browsing eBay and decided need some graphics cards. I had three graphics cards that had bought per that had purchased uh, previously and ran into an issue. And long story short, I fried three graphics cards. And there's a video out there, or there's a video coming up, just a little blog on what I did to fry three video cards. It's completely my fault. So I was looking on eBay, and I came across this graphics card for the low, low price of thirty dollars. So, okay, how bad can it be? Well, let's give it a shot. Let's see how it looks. So now, just kind of sidestepping a little bit, I've been buying most of my parts recently on eBay. I've actually been finding really good deals and steal of the deals on computers. I had bought that one, which I had paid 50 bucks for it. And there's another build that I have in pieces that we're working on. It's my theme build, which I haven't released yet, but if anybody's following my social media, kind of get an idea of what I'm going with it. So the RX 550. So this came in the other day and we're gonna open it up. The shipping came just like this, not too terrible. And here we are. Here's our RX. See if we get in the shot. Does it have it there? Maybe. Well, I guess it doesn't have it listed there. But it's an RX 550, regardless. So this is our RX 550. Very small, simple cooling solution that it comes with. Display port, HDMI, and DVI. So I'm gonna go over the specs on it real quick. Just go ahead and pull it up so I can be accurate when talking about this. So the RX 550 comes with a base clock of 1100 megahertz, boost clock to 1183. The memory clock is 1750, 7000 megahertz effective. This one is the four gig DDR5 version of it with a memory bus of 128 bit, 112 gigabits per second bandwidth. All right, 512 shading units, blah, 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 this, that, and the other, whatever. So single slot design, DirectX 12 capable, and just pretty much all around decent, I guess. And that's what we're gonna try to show and prove today. So got the card, comes in pretty clean as you can see, just like any used card, it's gonna have its dust, but the dust buildup is not too bad. So we're gonna probably just take a little brush I got over here, go ahead and brush this out real quick. And um, of course take this apart. And when we take it apart, I'm gonna go ahead and change the thermal paste, put fresh thermal paste, and we're gonna pop it into another friendly budget build. This is another Dell Vostro that I have. I remember if you noticed, the, I'll put a link, I did a $20 PC parts build for a Dell Vostro but I pretty much uh, upgraded it and made it a pretty decent gaming computer. Another Dell Vostro that I have. But this one, all we're gonna do with this one, which I've already started, is we put a solid state hard drive in, and that's it. That's all we did. This one paid $30 for it, $20 for a solid state hard drive, $50, $30 for a video card, $80. So can I game on a budget for $80? Can I play Fortnite? Can I play anything for $80? Of course, you're not going to have the greatest 4K, high K resolution, whatever. You're not going to get super duper a million frames per second or anything. No, but if we're able to average 50 to 60 frames per second, we can have a good, uh, gaming experience at 1080p low settings or 720p high settings so we're gonna take a spark we're gonna clean it up first give it a little loving from the garage and give her a better fighting chance and we'll pop her in this Dell Vostro and see what she does this one's an i5 3.4 quad core 8 gigs of RAM uh, 500 gig uh, mechanical hard drive 120 gig solid state hard drive nothing fancy but another easy build so if this works then we got a gaming computer for $80 and in the future, if somebody decides to buy this, all they would need to do is just upgrade the power supply and get a better video card for it. But the reason why I like this RX 550 for this build is pretty much it has no supplementary power. So we don't have to worry about giving this thing extra power just to run. So we can use the factory power Dell uh, power supply, which I believe this one is 300 watts. And we're gonna try to see if this thing holds up. Will it play, will it load, will it do anything? I mean, who knows, maybe this power supply is not good enough. I don't know, but we're gonna find out. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put this camera down and we're just gonna go over disassembling it and taking a look at it. So let's take you along.
All right, so let's get this in the camera angle right over here. The lighting is poor, forgive me, but as you can look, our thermal paste is dried up. All right, got a bunch of dust build up over here, so we're gonna clean up this thermal paste and put a fresh coat on it. Now, two things I do like to use, and I've talked about this in several videos, but I'll go over it again. Thermal paste remover, thermal service purifier, or just a bottle of alcohol, just, just great. But I got this and I need to finish it up. Plastic razors, they work great. Cheap on Amazon. They scoop things up. You don't have to worry about scratching the surfaces or anything. So, that, so I highly recommend them. Not too bad. Pretty clean. Got a little spot over there I need to work on, but it should work itself out. The good thing I like about these... Uh, plastic razors is that they do not scratch the uh, graph uh, the surfaces over here so this is like a piece of I believe it's aluminum I'm sure not 100% sure don't quote me on it but by using this I could scrape off this uh, thermal paste which is all dried up and then I could get it without causing any scratches or gouges in it a lot safer to use as you can see we got that nice and clean let me take a quick peek over here right, got a little bit Right over here that we just need to scrape off. All right, nice and clean. All right, I don't know if we can get in there. We got some bad uh, lighting going on today, but nice and clean. Good as new. We're gonna take our thermal paste, wherever we went. All right, just glob that on a little bit. Using the Arctic Silver 5 today for this one. Good thermal paste, good enough for testing purposes. Well, it's good enough in general. I like the, the Arctic <clears throat> Silver. I have Thermal Grizzly, but I'm running low on that supply, and I use that for some specialty builds I got going on right now. Now, when tightening these little screws down, do not over tighten them. Just snug. This is not an engine. Just nice and easy. If you tighten them too much, you can strip them, and then you can't get them out. And then you get a whole slew of problems to worry about. But just a little snug. Just go over through each one of them. All right. Let's go ahead and brush this off in the back. That makes this thing look pretty. Okay. There we go, good as new. Nice. All right, so we're gonna pause. I'm gonna reset up the shot over here and we're gonna pop it in that computer and see how it runs. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and pop it in our first row. Loosen this thing up. Again, how this opens up. There you go. Go ahead and slide that in. All right, there we go, nice and tight. Wherever all the other stuff goes. Power it up. And let's see the boots. All 
All right, so just change the plans real quick. I had attempted to put it into that Dell Vostra I had, but I think it had a power supply issue. So it just would not take the video card, would not boot, it was very unstable, whatever the case may be. Tried troubleshooting it. Long story short, um, it's a power supply issue. I just gotta get another one, eBay, $5. We'll fix it, no worries. So I um, went back into this uh, custom build that I'm doing, as you can see, the white motherboard. I'll have a video for that one down below if you're interested in that. And this is also kind of segueing to the uh, Excuse me, segueing into the uh, custom build I'm doing with this one. So, um, just an update. I'm currently waiting on some parts to come in. One of them has come in, and I don't see it it's around here somewhere. I don't know where it went. So, but one of them did come in. I'm waiting on the case. Once the case gets here, then we're going to do the build and reveal what we're doing on that as part of why this motherboard has been painted white. I'm going to talk about that later. So, the RX 550 is in. As you can see, it is running. I'm running Heaven Benchmark, which is what I like to use to kind of stress test this thing. And it's running not too bad. 1080p, averaging 50 to 60 frames per second, lows here and there. The boost clock, as you can see, 1183. Graphics, memory, 1750, so it's not running too bad. The fan is loud on this little thing. I don't know if I can get it in there. Let's see. I don't know if it picks that up pretty good. The fan's a little loud on this thing, but that's actually okay. I mean, it's a small little fan, but it works. So it's running pretty good. So this has been running for a while. Let's minimize this real quick. Let's pull up my temps. Yes. Let's see, where are our temps at? And the temp for this graphics card, which has been running on this uh, preset, it's about 42, 43. I like to look specky. Specky works really good at giving me my temps, so temps are holding steady on that. So I think it's actually cooling pretty good. So what we're gonna do now is, any game, is we're gonna open up my Epix game loader. Let's get this right over here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna load up Fortnite, and we'll see how Fortnite plays with this RX 550, and if it's actually a good budget buy for $30 on eBay. So just give me a sec while I get this thing loaded up. So the question I get all the time is, can it play Fortnite? Well, yes. After, of course, an hour of updates and updates and more updates, gosh, I missed the game, the old days where you just pop in a cartridge, play a game, and you're ready to go. But now you gotta wait for updates and DLCs and yada, 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 yada. But I got Fortnite, it's running. So I'm running a 720p resolution right now. It's running at a um, combination of medium to high settings. And it stays steady at 60 frames per second. It doesn't give me no lags, no issues, nothing. So it's actually running pretty good. Very happy with it. So now, $30 for this video card. Let's just take something into perspective for a sec. You have a pre-built computer that you have or you bought. Maybe you went on Facebook, eBay, you bought it for about $30, $40, whatever you may pay. The average you're gonna get is $50 for an i5, quad core, four gigs of RAM, eight gigs of RAM, whatever. Typically, they'll come with a hard drive. Sometimes you'll have to put one in, either a solid state, whatever. So, this video card paid $30. And what I like about this video card is that it doesn't have any supplemental power. And what I like about not having any supplemental power is that I can just pop it in. I don't have to worry about it. So now, if you have a video card, which I don't have any over here right now, because of course I put everything away. If I had a video card that needed supplemental power, then I'm gonna have to purchase a separate power supply for it. So then that power supply is gonna run 30 to $40, whatever the cost may be, plus a decent video card for it. It's about 50 to $60. So you're looking about $100 if you're gonna go for a used video card such as the RX 470 or a um, uh, 500 watt power supply. But if you don't have that type of money, $30 for a video card is actually not bad and it doesn't need supplemental power. So we're just gonna pause out of this and we're gonna take a look. So, the RX 550, the temperatures are running real good. Let me get my thermal thermometer over here, see if we can get that in there. And this thing has been playing for probably the last hour, if that, 56.7 degrees, 51, whatever. So somewhere between 50 to 58, yeah, just around there. So this is the temperature that it's running at, and it's been running for about an hour at medium to high settings, which is pretty tough for this video card for this game but it runs pretty good. And also, it's quiet. You can barely hear it. So not too bad for the price, $30.
if you want it to go better, like I said, you're gonna have to, if you go to, if you have a Dell, for example, if you, Dell, you have a Dell Optiplex, you could just buy a power supply, pop it in, get a 50 to $60 video card, you're good to go. But in the case of this Lenovo, which we're gonna go back into this video in just a little bit with this computer, talking about the white build another time, this Lenovo actually requires a special adapter and a few other things that you'd have to do just to get it to work with a different type of power supply. But it's really easy. We'll do a separate video on that. So for $30, I'm able to play Fortnite, Rise of the Tomb Raider, whatever. Once again, you're not gonna get super high settings, 4K, 2K resolution, you know, but you're gonna be able to play 720p to 1080p, low to medium resolution, depending on the game, combination of settings. And it works great so for thirty dollars i think it's a good bang for the buck and you know you just decide what you want to do with it i mean if you're happy with it that works but just pop it in the computer you're ready to go especially these proprietary ones like right over here it's another dell it's a low profile one so that wouldn't work too well um yeah you can just pop it in and you're good to go so my recommendations do i recommend this video card yeah absolutely for the price to performance i think it's a great bang for the buck it's a good uh, price to performance issue, $30. I mean, where else can you get a $30 um, video card to save a play this? Now think about this for an Xbox. An Xbox, you're gonna pay three, two to $400. I don't know what they cost. This computer, with uh, even with a solid state hard drive with this video card, 100 bucks. This computer, I paid 40 bucks for it. I paid $30 for the video card, $70, and I also paid $20 for the um, solid state hard drive. So for 100 bucks, I got a complete running computer that could play a bunch of games and even more and I'm not limited and I could upgrade later. So just something to think about. So the RX 450, do I recommend it? Yes. They're going on eBay right now anywhere between $30 to $50. I found this one for $30. So just something to keep in mind. All right. Thanks for watching. I'll post links to my other videos. Appreciate it.